motion uh, to recommend making it part of the noise ordinance did pass. So that is the recommendation to make it like a, a barking dog. All right, take care of it that way. Um, so in a nutshell, in an eggshell, that is it. I don't know if you have any questions for me. I didn't want to belabor this subject. Thank you, Jim. Does anybody have any questions? Oops. Caitlin. Yeah. So how would, if I have a problem with my neighbor who has a rooster, how would it then be solved as following the barking dog ordinance? Do you, I mean, you can't train a rooster to not no, bark. No, like you, you can't. Train and we've dog. limited uh, a farm such as yours would be exempt. Commercial farms of 100,000, I think I believe it's 100,000 square feet or larger, is exempt. Even if you, the neighbors were complaining, they, they would not be part of it. You would be exempt from that part of the ordinance. Right. But there's other people out there who, you know, live in Cape Elizabeth who enjoy the fact and the, the way of life that you can have a neighbor or be a small household and have chickens and roosters, you know, to live with your chickens because... <laughs> <laughs> because it's healthier. <laughs> um, you know, so the, it's a way of life that we, I, mean, I would think would be a, a thing to preserve here in, you know, Cape Elizabeth, the, the rural town that we want to keep. So how would it be for a, a, you know, an average household lot? How would the problem be solved for them? Um, I would have to go back and look to see what the ordinance says about decibel levels at the property line. Uh, I, I just don't have that on the tip of my tongue. It would have to be uh, written as a, written up. That's good. But uh, that's one of the reasons we, uh, the 40,000 square foot lot limit was uh, voted down because we did not want to limit uh, to larger tracts of land. And on a personal note, I live next door to a rooster. I love it. It doesn't bother me at all. And, um, but I can't, I'm not everybody. So uh, there will be people who obviously that complain, which is what started the whole thing. And since you love it, maybe we're up past your bedtime. You need to <laughs> get home soon to wake up with a rooster. But uh, actually, all kidding aside, uh, the town manager could address the issue uh, about how we deal with it under the noise ordinance. We receive, uh, thank you, uh, David. We receive two or three uh, complaints a year. Uh, other than encouraging neighbors to work together, there does not appear to be any enforcement mechanism under the current ordinances uh, to stop noisy roosters. Okay. C could, I, Ann. could I ask a question? I'm not f familiar enough with the, the barking dog ordinance, the noise ordinance. What is, do you, can you give a very brief overview of what yeah, the I, I didn't bring the ordinance, ordinance is? with me. Yeah, thank you, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, I didn't bring the, the ordinance with me, but the, the, the barking dog ordinance relates to barking dogs. Uh, it doesn't relate to... So it specifically it mentions yeah, it dogs. To, ...to other animals. That is true. We, we debated that. It does not... Presently, with no changes, roosters, there's nothing legally you can do about it. So does the barking dog... <laughs> I'm sorry. This yeah. just seems so... Very serious subject. It's a serious I subject to the people that right. is annoying, too. I understand that. I just feel funny talking about dogs and roosters. <laughs> um, the barking dog ordinance... How is it determined, Michael or Jim, if, if, if somebody has a barking dog yeah. next to them that's annoying them, are they just encouraged to work with their neighbors, or is there some sort of enforcement of the barking dog ordinance? The, the barking dog ordinance involves both code enforcement and the police department, and you can, in fact, uh, remove the dog uh, under the current ordinances if, if it gets to the point of... of you know, total uh, uh, nuisance. And is there measurement by decibels? There's no specific or decibels. Uh, is it durational? Uh, no. Okay. So there's no, there's no measurement of no. a barking dogs. Quite barking? frankly, in in most instances, you know, we've never had to prosecute anyone. Uh, we have had folks when, you know, when we've dealt with that, who realize there's a problem and they have to deal with it, and they've dealt with it. Okay. Thank you. And go ahead, Caitlin. Oh, just so if somebody was to call and complain about a rooster, we're not adding anything, ordinances. We're just going to refer to existing ordinances to kind of handle the situation? No, there's, there's absolutely no way to handle them under the existing ordinances. 
Uh, well, we will simply say, we're sorry, we can't help you. Okay, I was just curious as to what it meant by, you know, the disturbing the peace and the dog ordinance. You would have to modify the existing ordinance to, to, to add roosters and make some sort of criteria, um, a duration, uh, X number of complaints, and then the per you'd have to come up with something, they'd have to do something about it. If, if I might, Go ahead, Mike. If you, I think if you read the disturbing the peace in its whole context, it refers to a person disturbing the peace. Uh, so it, it does not extend to. Is my recollection correct, Caitlin? Is my recollection correct? I don't. The you, vote. I'm not reading. Oh, okay. It, no, I'm, reading, I'm reading the order from the planning board that says to make amendments and. That's what I'm when we looked at this issue with the several citizens who complained, what we discovered, my recollection we discovered, is that the disturbing the peace only applies to people disturbing the peace and, and not the animals. Uh, Sarah and then Ann. <coughs> I have a suggestion. Maybe we should refer this to the Ordinance Committee to explore. I know it's already been there, but maybe they could briefly explore some small amendment to an existing ordinance that might say dogs, roosters, and rabbits, or whatever, or, or some tweak that would make it so somebody could do something if they were annoyed enough, but not have to draft an entire new ordinance. Would that be annoying to the Ordinance Committee? I, <laughs> before the Ordinance Committee responds. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know if you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that's an excellent idea, Sarah, and all kidding aside, I think if you live in a neighborhood such as mine where the lots are smaller, you would not necessarily expect there to be roosters crowing next door waking you up at uh, an early hour. Uh, certainly I also uh, value our agricultural heritage and the, the farming that goes on now, so I wouldn't want to interfere with that, but I think it would make some sense to refer this to the Ordinance Committee. I thank the Chairman of the Finance Committee for giving us this work. I'm sure, they have very high expectations. <laughs> All right, better. before this degenerates further, uh, do we have a motion? Uh, yes, Jessica. I, I move that we uh, refer item 64 2011 rooster review request back to the Ordinance Committee. Second. All, yes, Caitlin, yes. If we're voting no to referring it to the Ordinance Committee, essentially it, nothing happens and roosters get to live freely within the town. <laughs> uh, I think that's correct. Okay. Just wanted to be... No. That's a fair question. Any other questions or discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? To, to send it to, to the, send the Ordinance Committee? To send it to the Ordinance Committee, yes. Okay. Six in favor? Oh, all slowly. Here. Okay. All those opposed? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Motion carries six to one. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> I, I would note for the record that the three members of the Ordinance Committee sort of half-heartedly raised their hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank uh, you. He did. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Item 65-2011. Uh, this is a group use request. The United States Coast Guard sector of New England is requesting the use of the green in Fort Williams Park. Uh, next to Portland Headlight for a change of command ceremony with a reception to follow on Friday, June 24, 2011. The noon reception request includes a request for permission to serve beer and wine. And as our notes indicate, the last time such permission was granted was on August 1, 1983. Was that for the National Governor's Convention? Uh, and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has recommended approval. Um, are there any questions about this request? Or do I have a motion? Move to accept the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Okay. Is there a second? A second. And the motion has been made and seconded to approve this request. Uh, any further discussion or questions? Oh, yes, Mike. I just have one comment. I would like to thank Lieutenant Beck for being with us this evening, just in case you did have any questions. Thank okay. you. All right. Any other questions or comments? All, right. All those in favor of the motion. Yeah, the motion carries unanimously, and thank you, sir, for coming tonight. Okay. Uh, okay item 66-2011, this is a, uh, another Fort Williams Park group use request for a wedding reception. Uh, 
Tucker Jordan is requesting the use of the green in Fort Williams Park next to the Portland Headlight for a wedding reception on Saturday, June 4th, 2011. The request includes permission to set up on the previous day and to take down a tent on the following day. Uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission recommended to Mr. Jordan that he consider a different location at the picnic shelter and the adjacent area instead of the green. And we have here tonight, uh, yes, oh, I'm sorry. Before we begin the presentation, Caitlin. Um, because the person making the request is my brother, I'm going to have to ask to recuse myself from this item on the agenda. Okay, I think that's appropriate. Uh, so we'll see you at the next item. Caitlin. Yes, do we need to have I a believe we have to vote on that. Okay. Is there a motion? I move that we accept uh, Caitlin Jordan's request to be recused from the Jordan request for Fort Williams Park. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Okay. Carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jordan. Good evening. Um, Mark Tibbetts with uh, A Plus uh, Party Rentals here with me tonight to, in case you have any questions on how long it will take to set the tent up and take it down. And um, just to let you know, he's uh, done this previously for the Coast Guard, and from what I understand, we'll be doing it again for them this year. So if you have any questions about the tent, the procedure, how much time he needs, and whatnot, he's more than happy to entertain that. Um, I guess, to just to start off, I would like to thank everybody for giving me the time to come up here and see you tonight. Um, uh, the, the timeline that I have um, would be set forth as in the paperwork that you have in front of you. Um, we plan to have a rehearsal dinner um, Friday night at the picnic shelter area and then to use that time to decorate the tent and whatnot after um, Mark has, has uh, set it up. Um, <clears throat> on Saturday, the wedding reception takes place between 2 to 8 o'clock um, in, the, in the hours of the day, in the afternoon. And then Sunday uh, morning, the tent can be uh, taken down. From what I understand, is as early as possible. Yep. <clears throat> um, at this point, uh, I would like to make this as a proposal as in the, in the effect that the town could use this as a pilot project, if you will, of some nature to work the kinks out if, um, if you wanted to in the future look at make, generating revenue by allowing people to come into the fort and um, use the aesthetics that the coastline and the lighthouse offers for their, for their weddings and receptions. And I personally, which is why I want to have it there, I think it would be a great opportunity for the town to not only have a well-standing family um, in the town to work with, case there is anything that arises that you don't like, that you'd like to see differently, um, and to move, to move through it as we go. Um, the catering, um, if you want to know, will be done by Jay Richardson and Dwayne S. Dorian. Um, Jay formerly owned Casco Bay Lobster Bakes and is now coming out to try to get that summer business back up and running. He owns the uh, Stone Works next to the Lincoln Cemetery. Um, other than that, um, the other avenue to look at would be if the town wanted to offer, uh, if this was to go forward, offer electricity um, to, the, to the event, such as for lighting or um, band, and that this would be a good opportunity for the town to see how much electricity would be drawn and to budget that into anybody that wants to generate a proposal for, for the future. If you'll note, um, and I'm sorry the pictures are so small, uh, the green area, I'm sure we're all familiar with where the green area is, it runs parallel to the coastline, directly off to the right-hand side of the headlight. Um, SMCC gets $3,000 this year to rent out that area um, by, their, by the university, by the college there, to generate revenue for their own, their own school and their own property. Um, so when you take into consideration what they are getting for that, I'm sure people would be more than willing to pay that price for Portland Headlight and you'd get more attention for it. Um, the, green, the green area is very, is very long and very well accommodating to both the tent size that we want to put up 
the party size that we want to have and allow people that come to enjoy the park to not have to.